So, so when you were looking at the books, when you were looking at the business, like, I think there's some standard stuff that people would look at, but like, wh what type of stuff specifically were you looking at to figure out that, that point hobby versus an actual profitable business? I mean, could, was it black and white that you could see from the numbers or, or were there other things that you were looking at? Uh, well, well, we did, uh, you know, we, we did a review of the financials with the small business development center, which is, you know, I'll shout them out and, um, you know, just always an advocate for the programs they have available, especially because a lot of them are free. Um, so I kind of took the financials from a couple years to them and said, you know, uh, as an outside set of eyes, do you guys see any red flags? And over the course of a couple of uh, virtual meetings, because we couldn't meet in person, um, didn't identify any major red flags, identified some areas that we needed to ask some additional questions and do some due diligence, understand, you know, what falls under this bucket, um, you know, here in the financials, what falls under that bucket, uh, just to really understand kind of the day to day, right? Small business, especially, um, you know, they're so integrated into people's lives. It could be as simple as something as, you know, uh, you know, how many cell phone lines are, are on the phone plan that is, it belongs to the winery and who do those belong to? Um, but, uh, you know, we, we went through and, and really decided that it just was a solid, you know, small business. It had been decidedly small and, um, you know, had some upside opportunity. Intentionally be small because that's what they wanted. They didn't want to have a big scaled business. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, this was, this was actually their retirement job. Like they, the couple that started the winery, they had already retired from careers and this was kind of like their later in life passion project. Um, and it was one that lasted, you know, I mean, to even be at a point where you have a business that's 14 years old, right? Like there's, there's good bones there, even if there are some things that can be improved upon. Well, and I think the context of some of those pieces are important, right? Where it's like someone asks you the question, for example, how much money do you have in your bank account oh. today? $1 million. Knowing that a $1.1 $1 .1 million charge is going tomorrow, you, you know, like the context of that story or that, that that statement isn't all there, right? And so to to be like, what's in this bucket, you know? Right. And I, I think that's interesting when, when you're looking at, because financials, they, they only so sh show so much if you only look so deep. And so if you don't look deep enough, it, it, it can really screw you up in that situation. And so that's cool that you, you, you well, yeah, uh, dipped yeah, I had into never, that. I never bought a business before, you know, like I'm a guy I work in sales and marketing, like I'm a you know, sales marketing biz dev guy in the hospitality industry and the hotel industry. So it was a lot of like, I didn't know what I didn't know. And, um, you know, I just really reached out to as many people as I could, asked a lot of questions. Um, like I said, got those eyes on it from some professionals that could say, hey, look, we've been through this. Um, and then, you know, going through that process, speaking to, you know, other local business leaders, their perception of the business, uh, the county administrators and tax people, you know, and really kind of just going through and saying, not just, you know, does the business exist, but, you know, what's people's perception of it? Is it positive? Are we going to have to overcome that? Right. And that led to the conversations about whether or not we would need to rebrand um, and, and things like that. So it opened up a lot of questions kind of in our five year growth plan that we'll still be kind of working on addressing. Were you so you, you talked about the acquisition of the business and you um talked about kind of like this the county aspect of it and stuff like that one, one number that a lot of people will throw around is um traffic that drives by because you guys are a retail environment did you actually put some proof into putting into those numbers to see if you know, you know oh 50 because right so like you you know you helped uh open the main my office was down uh across the street from there i think the number was something like there's fifty thousand people active in downtown norfolk a week I call BS on that number, right? Because I look at that number and I say, that means 50,000 people are going to be walking into the, potentially could be walking, potential, that's the word there, right? Could be walking into the restaurants and buying. And all you have to do is go into those restaurants to realize that they're turning one a day, maybe, meaning the cycle through, you're not waiting in a, in a long line. That's not really that crazy uh, busy compared to other places. So, did you look at that number that they gave you and then actually go tie deeper into it to figure out like, okay, like this traffic's nice, but it's not really going to be realistic for the things that I want to do. I'm going to have to really do some outbound stuff to, to acquire the business because I, I find that that, that number is a pretty misleading number in most, in, in most cases. 
Uh, yeah, so I, I mean, we had the data for that, but I think what's more important is less how many people are driving past and how many people, you know, are potential customers. And I don't think those are the same thing, right? I right. think uh, it's a vanity metric, right? It's a hundred percent. I, I, I 100% think it's a vanity metric. I mean, that's it's maybe lie, the original right? vanity metric, right? For all yeah. of us in that, um, Economic but you know, development we, one-on-one, how many people we, potentially could drive by your thing a day? Right. Oh. right. I actually looked at it and said, you know, it was much more about who the other people in in the development were and understanding some of the other businesses. If they had a loyal customer base, like we're right next to a really popular, you know, barbecue restaurant. And that's That's more helpful to us than than the people that drive past. I drive past the winery four times a day just to be able to get from my neighborhood to, you know, my day job and a couple other areas that we go. And so I can physically see it, you know, to and from what the other development or what the other people in the development are doing on a day-to-day basis for cars that are actually at their business. Are you stuck at your home office, socially distanced coffee shop, or your fancy all bricked out corner office wondering why no one can see your business and sales are all over the place? Sounds like you need a pro. That's why I developed the Anomaly Academy. Insert clever copy here. Oh, guess I was supposed to put something else there. Oops. You can grab access to the Anomaly Academy now at ZachMillerSays.com slash Anomaly Academy.